Welcome everybody. Yep, it's a crypto sniper. Bitcoin happenings. Bitcoin happenings. Yes, we are here to talk to you about the Bitcoin happenings and what's going on. Some of you feeling a little bit upset, a little bit down. The market's moving south. Um, never fear, never fear. Here to explain it all to you um, is the crypto sniper, yours truly, Francis Sons. Okay, so let's talk about the most recent. We've done so many videos on the macro. We explained a number of things. I'm going to hit the light and a whole bunch of annotations are going to come in on this chart. Uh, but before I do, I didn't want to overwhelm you. I just wanted to highlight in short form what happened. Here was your strong impulsive move. Thereafter, you had a little bit of a squeezy, squeezy break. Uh, and then we drew our broadening structure uh, that ran along all the lows like this. We like that. Uh, you've seen that chart before if you're a regular follower and that's your splitter across the broadening structure uh, and you often tend to hang there or when you can't make it all the way to the other side like there, uh, there and there you end up uh, making it only to the midpoint. And when you break the basing ascending grind line of an ascending megaphone on a bull pole, this is theory unique to us. There is no other technical analysis place where you too can find uh, this uh, theory. It is the, the expectation is for a downside move. Why? Because you have bull pole and an ascending megaphone. If it had been a descending megaphone, we would have expected upside continuation. So what's actually happening is you've been doing a lot of grinding up and then a surge, then a grind up and then a surge. And then the key levels we told you, I had someone in the comments saying, oh, so useful, high end insight. Everybody's so smart, high end insight. And I'm like, you must be new here <laughs> because nobody has been talking about the, oh, the 47.5 number for longer than must be in fact it's over a year because it was our significant neckline on the head and shoulders and when we turned and started going back up the 42.5 and the 47.5 were key levels where did they come from the inverted head and shoulders that were done so i suppose we have to recap for the likes of those people in the ever so quickest of way we're going to come back to the 12 hour let's just do it super quickly so you had uh, the inverted head and shoulder that was there. So if we go boom, that's going to be too much detail. Uh, quick sketch. This is why and people miss that. That was your turning and it was the 25k neckline. That was your head. That was your right shoulder. In fact, we gave the 19.9 for a quick and dirty entry on the basis. You'll probably run the 20. You could have been long in there with us. Uh, then you had the falling wedge that led to another pump. Then the one bit where we got shaken and there was dollar strength was the sustained period of hang. We wondered, is this going to form a head and shoulders? Instead, the ETF news hotted up fast at first. And this is what I mean by grinding. Then those key levels. Well, you had your 25 and then the macro head and shoulders, 47.5. That was the head and shoulders of way back then on the first thought to be high 64K only to be marginally higher later on the 69k head and shoulder that had the 42 and a half neckline over there so there were two key levels that we have not stopped talking about the 42 and a half through there that were seminally very very important and they were right there and the target for this inverted head and shoulders brought us only by HVF method, not if you do it in the traditional manner. By the way, you want to learn, click the first link below, book a call. And that took you to 40,600 uh, odd there. So we had three major levels for Bitcoin between the 40 and a half, the 42 and a half and the 47 and a half. And we said you will first do the 40 and a half, obviously, and probably overshoot to the 42.5, where after some degree, because there's a 5K difference of winding up will be necessary. And then it will be exhaustive once you make the 47.5. In short, a localized top call. Don't forget that bear flag on the way down. How many times we've spoken about it? You had to get just up to and be beaten marginally higher high on a previous bear structure that also gave the downside targets. These head and shoulders that no one else spoke about on the HVF method basis gave a 16K bottom, the biggest one with the 69K high. That is our history. If you haven't heard about 47 and a half, 42 and a half, 40 and a half, and then the next level way down at 25, then you haven't been watching our channel. So it's always frustrating. Oh, you're telling us now we should have sold at 47.5. No, 
No, a localized high was called long time ago on balance of probabilities as being a strong possibility and reduction of exposure and cancellation of all leverage. Um, and I'm actually in my key must hold uh, crypto and the rest more than the dominant part over 65 percent is in tether and i'm accumulating btc value as btc sells off but is it the end of the world no it isn't so let's just go back to that 12 hourly uh and carry on from there now that we've reminded everybody of history it is a broadening structure after a bullish period so you've had a bull pole we covered that but just to recapture and there you go you've let go on that after that uh, broadening was formed so this has been a grinding lower momentum progress but there was dip buying and that now is the end of that there's a sort of fatigue uh, with the whole lovely little wind up there so let's show you all this action now you're going to get hit with all the annotations we've been building the chart for a while so this is the view and bring it all up there it all is and now i've also done something else that i'm going to talk about uh, and that is uh, volume by price. Why? Because you're all going to ask the next question. Okay, you're so smart. Where's it going to go down to next? Well, we don't know for absolute. We don't have the same strength of key levels as we uh, had for those two head and shoulders. But there is a tool where you can have some basis for an idea. So this is not as strong a call as, hey, localized top coming up. Uh, potentially all still on a macro bull you had three separate occasions there there and there where you could have got out at 47.5 and I think it actually traded 49 at its absolute high on that neckline this is the historic neckline of 47.5 of the 64,000 K head and shoulders that by the way broke all the way down to 29k and made its target before going back up to 69 uh, as part of the final stages of the bull market before the lengthy bear that brought us ftx three arrows and everything else so a lot of history so we were pointing out that there was a couple of uh, patterns that were playing out quite regularly so after this little squeezy breakout you got a surge period then you would get a sell-off the blue sell-off you would get a, a, a spike in the gray box and a churn and a sell off in the gray box. Then you would get the orange box, a dip and a spike again. And then you'd get a, a calming and then your next surge. This was your calming of a next surge. There it goes, squeezing, lower volatility, next surge. Same again, sell off, boom, after your surge. This hits, of course, the high side of our ascending megaphone. Boom, gray box, sell off and up. Uh, back up in it pause orange box and up a down and then a calming low volatility and then your next surge boom what came after the surge the sell-off only now you were losing that momentum inside those churn periods was actually a grinding upward channel which we done in the dotted blue there and there each one had it each one had it and then you got your final push through exhaustive through the 47.5 uh, there was a squeezy squeezy over there which was a downside squeezy brought you down where was the point at which it got temporary support and wound up again at the 42.5 that neckline of the 69k head and shoulders that gave you the 16k low perfectly high performing major bottom calling top and bottom calling head and shoulders bookended this entire bitcoin price behavior event was bookended by key head and shoulders and nobody is talking about it the inverted head and shoulders that called the end the low 16k that was the target of the 69k downside all only by hvf method you won't get it by traditionally taught you need to find out how and why we did it and it gave absolute lows now after that 42.5 you sold off again and you started bouncing along the basing lows as you had done previously here bounce 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 low volatility eyeing up the spiller bang you've broken it and that's what should have happened that's why that's in red it's the expected level to be broken not the gray in other words an ascending megaphone on a bull pole the upside move that brought us the etf news that blasted us from 25k up to the mid 30s um, that is two things of an upside that points to high momentum into lower momentum fatigue we are in etf bitcoin fatigue guys 
uh, and now that you've got your special instrument, you think everybody's rushing to buy? They bought already. It was part and part of the process. Nobody's waiting for the news to buy. And now that it's a brand new shiny toy, nobody knows what to do with it for a while. Just like when the futures came out. Uh, it traded on ridiculously low volume. It took a while for everybody to work out. It didn't, you know, it wasn't really happening for an extended period. So it will start to take momentum later. This means right now you actually have localized top uh, on B BTC. It's not the end of the bull run. This is not a bear call. This is a significant pullback call in what remains to be a bull market. But it's, as we warned, you, you should be looking to reduce and uh, get defensive at the 47.5, as we reported repeatedly. By the way, you got that squeeze when you're at the 42.5. Look at this, the 42.5 in the light blue there. There she blows. You got your squeeze and squeeze to get you your up, down and up to finally get you the technical run through the tape and then exhaustion. And then you get your wind up and back down down to the base of the the uh, megaphone small little wee squeezy squeezy low vol and it's eyeing downside and that's it so the next question you're all going to ask as i said how low does he go well uh, the truth of the matter is i don't have as strong a conviction as i had for this localized high but how could you look at and get some ideas well here's theory we only have and this is how to do volume by price on a pattern structure. So we have already done that for you. You want to find out how and why it's placed exactly as I do it. Most people go and put it on the other side here by the price and they do a drag it across the whole screen. It reduces the value and it is not going to give you the answer you need. What you can actually see is that the squeeze period over here was tapping for a long time on the high side. So you should have expected the breakout to the top on this volume. See the big volume there? That was there. So this is your 70% of all volume, the dark area. It's set to 70. But the fat belly right here is where it all was. And the point of control was across the top. You were tapping on the ceiling more than you were needing support. That means you were looking for the higher high. You should have traded for the final upside move for the key run. That was the key information you needed out of that. Thereafter, you needed to cut and run. Look how little traded there. That was ghost trading. You, you know, I mean, you're retail. You're not going to worry about getting out on Bitcoin on account of liquidity. But institutions and major hedge funds that were, if they accumulated a whole bunch, would have really battled. That was super, super low. It is a very, very low. It's outside the 70 percent. And the bulk of the 30 percent is all here. That will be lucky to be a couple of percent uh, above the 47 and a half. So the 47 and a half, you sold out on fumes if you did, as we advised, as our community had did, done and taken defensive positions. So back to the question, what happens? So you have bulky volume periods. So we, we have the theory inside HVF method about voids and vacuum. That is where the market trades a high degree at a certain price point. I've just uh, circle the box. Another example will be here and I will circle a few more boxes uh, for you encircle them and then you have the gaps in between where actually it's pretty low. That was moderate and this was low. We refer to them as voids and vacuums. So what tends to happen is particularly in the most extreme voids and vacuums you get fast behavior. Not many people activated or engaged in the market at that price point. So you often move very quickly through it. So you take this box and I'm going to do this void and vacuum. I'm going to change color. Instead of using the transgender pink, we'll go with uh, orange. And we'll highlight it here. And we want a fat cokey so it can pop. So particularly from that one, you can see that you traded on the upside pretty quickly through it. It served as support. You never traded into it. And you can see now on the downside how quick you've gone through it. From our breaking, and in fact I'll include that wee guy as well. He's only marginally bigger. Um, whoops. <laughs> too many boxes, too many boxes. Orange box for you. Anybody for an orange box? 
Okay, so there you go. So you can see that literally coincided that blue circle that highlighted the break of our basing ascending grind line, which is one component of a three component ascending uh, megaphone, occurred all on the low volume zone and you went quick. You went quick. That's your move. A spiller, an absolute thriller. All the way from Manila. That's right. Uh, why? Because there was low engagement. It's a vacuum. It's a bit of a void and a vacuum. Um, while you had high engagement in this area in the pink box over there that ran through that price behavior and pretty high over here as well. So what tends to happen? What tends to happen is you spill fast through here. Where is the high volume where you're probably almost certainly likely to get quite a bit of support if you were to get there? Back down here. So you're going to ask, what levels, what levels, what prices? Da, 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 da. Keep shouting the questions. I can hear you squeaking um, like mice in a piano um, as I chunder away my Mozart uh, symphony uh, and my Picasso. Of course, this is a beautiful Picasso. I'm going to turn it into an NFT. First note to, uh, to bid $300,000 can have it um, with a personal signature. Uh, and I'm only semi-serious about that one. Um, yeah, so what you got here is that real volume and that came with that came with the price behavior here. You blasted into this, but then you churned, you churned, you churned. Hence what I was showing you in the gray and the orange boxes. Look at this churn. This is accumulating volume at that price before you leave. Then you had your squeeze here. Squeezy, squeezy, nice little ascending structure. Zab it straight through. No churn. Straight through. Then you went heavy into the next low, and now you're into the, the, the pink box on the other side. Churn, 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 lots of churn, accumulating volume by price, pink box on the other side. You see this, this is technical analysis 101. In fact, it's not 101, it's 909 for the experts of HVF method. Uh, it's in our advanced section and you can find out and watch us actually implement it in Markets Live. So you have, a, you have your World Economic Forum burger there with your air-based insect patty, which doesn't offer much. And then you have this thick, heavy uh, grain bread burger there that's uh, over here, supported by high volume. So that's high volume area, high volume area, and then that's your void area. So you've fallen pretty far. The 37.75, you see me mentioning it there. That's where you start to come into the tops of the higher volume area that's coming along here. You're going to probably see some support. There's a bit of a green candle now. Um, you might slow down. You were spilling your guts a little bit harshly, but you could still grind lower. You can be a green candle now, go up a little bit, grind, go into a more falling wedge type structure into in and around that 37.75. And that's this place of great support. So I would imagine that the degree of downside would start to slow from here on in. You've already had quite a few uh, strikes of selling here, a big initial strike, a second and third strike. Uh, so normally it comes in surges of three. You get your counter push, counter push. So that's a little bit, early, but you can grind and extend in a falling wedge into there. So I would start to expect some support here and slow down and possibly even basic. So this is your BTC fatigue. By the way, also worth talking about, also worth talking about is all my alerts on um, Ethereum also started to uh, ping. Don't forget to put your alerts in, by the way. It's a free alarm bell to when you go lower. And you can also make sure that you put some on the high side as well because it could start moving up. Um, but I don't think with momentum just yet. There, uh, so let's go to the, what I was going to say next the uh, Ethereum. So what went on with Ethereum? The second biggest token still. Very similar structure you can see to uh, BTC in terms of the broadening. This is your ascending event. Thank you for putting the label in the way. There you go. Uh, and we put our splitter in there and you can see grinding out higher. So there'll be some of you saying, but, 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 I think you said F Euro is in a macro long term upside HVF. It is, it is, and it is. But this is a pullback period, and it's not going to, if it doesn't invalidate its funnel, it's just part and parcel of the process of going up. Again, on a, a bullish surge. So overall, this is a little bit congestive. However, the thing with F is that it's got straight to a level where it was supported. This was quite a key level, the 2000 to the 2200. What level are we here? Let's just uh, get the cursor in. 
2000 to 222. This is quite an interesting level. But there was a lot of support. Then you had that final blow off. It's bearish that you've taken that all back. And you do still stand a technical risk that this becomes a complex left shoulder. That becomes a head. You get some weak rally like in a flag. And you could still sell off again. So it has the potential to become a bigger kick crypto into quarter two before it gets interesting again. You know, even mid-year uh, and we churn, we sell off a bit, we base out a bit more. We set up this head and shoulders, we sell off a bit. Just because you get a head and shoulders doesn't mean you'll always perform in target. And it's not to say I'm saying it will do a head and shoulders. It could just trade through and down. Bitcoin was in that situation and it went and just traded further down, which actually is better. It's bearish now, but it's better than setting up getting a weak rally which pre-exhausts the market even more, only for an even harder slam later on a head and shoulder. So it's actually better that Bitcoin just bled out a little more and just has ruined the possibility. And if Ethereum were to follow, uh, it would also be uh, better overall for it, although you're not wanting that to happen right now. Technically, overall, that would be more interesting. So lots of scribbles on that. What are we uh, doing here? We're having a look at how Bitcoin has performed relative to ethereum and i want to highlight if we just take it since the lows so this is your 16k you made 15 odd lows so it was a great great bottom and you're at about 1042 there um, for ethereum you can see ethereum is lagging it's got back to this congestion zone that was over there for bitcoin bitcoin has already gone on and further down so Ethereum still has the possibility fundamentally, by the way, so we mustn't ever confuse a fundamental discussion with technical analysis. So I'm just sidebarring here. BTC has got its uh, ETF. It's a question of will other tokens now get. So at the moment, it still has a card or a shoe that could drop for it. That's positive. It's all baked into Bitcoin. And it's also had the bigger move. Remember, Bitcoin dominance. Who told you about Bitcoin dominance? Where are those guys that said, oh, so you're telling us in hindsight. You've never mentioned 47 and a half K before. Um, Bitcoin dominance. We were big on that. We will go to that chart uh, next after this. But it drove, 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 went up to 55%. Why? Because the ETF that was yet to drop hadn't happened and Bitcoin was expected to be the first. In that sense, ETH has now moved into that slot, fundamentally speaking, and Bitcoin is now in the fatigue. It's all priced in, buy on the rumor, sell on the fact. Uh, it's all priced in. In actual fact, not too much is happening. There's a bit of fatigue. Everybody's having to work it all out. It's all very new, da 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 da. And as a result, pricing um, is coming off. So Ethereum is behind us. So it could play catch up with Bitcoin and say goodbye to that support. So Bitcoin had for that period a little bit of a support area that it let go. Uh, and the equivalent is that 2.2 uh, two level down possibly to 2000. So S is in an interesting point right now. Does it bounce? Does it fall further? I think it's probably going to fall further if Bitcoin is going to go a bit deeper to the, the levels around here where I was highlighting the volume is higher. So I think it probably would ease. It would be better if it doesn't do a, a great right shoulder and give us any macro reversal structure because then we get bigger targets for downside projections. That'll upset a lot of people. But who knows what's coming? The, the macro non-crypto realm is a wreck. It is a wreck. And if people are forced to sell because of equities, housing, interest rates not going down or going up instead of down, etc., etc. Don't forget, for the bond market to go up is what is needed for interest rates to go down. Who's going to be buying all the bond market? Who wants debt? <coughs> Do you think pension funds already stuffed with it? Eating 30% losses on their bond portfolio that have watched the British uh, pension fund run out of liquidity and have to have government state support that has the Californian uh, teachers fund uh, second biggest pension in all of United States borrowing money rather than being forced to sell at suboptimal prices more about the liquidity ain't there there are no buyers they are holding this market up and they say don't let anyone break ranks and crash and panic sell 
Debt is a busted flush. Debt is also the turbo juice of future crypto markets. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out over there. But <coughs> Bitcoin, with its ETF now in the bag, <coughs> excuse me, is now uh, selling off uh, lower than that support. Maybe Ethereum still has uh, an ace in its sleeve. Maybe that's why it's lagging. So I promised you the Bitcoin dominance. Uh, so we're going to leave this beautiful out trade and in between the range here. Uh, we're going to go to BTCD now and just remind you of how the dominance was the thing. Now, I'd imagine that you've seen a fair give up in the dominance. We had a high up top there. I think I said 55.35 in the end and you made 55 again, but you've thrown it down. And that's, as I say, I think that's the ETF fatigue factor. But that is quite a rounded bottom. What you have to remember is after the fatigue factor is in and Bitcoin's going down, the others are higher beta and more volatile. So you've got quite a nice rounded bottom here that's actually suggesting um, no mass uh, downside relative to the others. So you could actually see Bitcoin get a bit of a base because it is less prone to sell off violently than the smaller uh, crypto. So this is actually starting now to do more damage. Initially when Bitcoin was selling off and that would have been the 11th of Jan. That was your high guys. You needed to be you needed to have got defensive no one should have had a leverage trade if you were watching our channel you should not have had a leverage long trade you should have sized everything right back you should have had an absolute bundle of usdt we literally said to you everything could be bought back at a lower price in all likelihood on balance of probabilities after the 47.5 is done and that is a serious serious key level of significance and it's part of our theory that we entrust it's what led us to call the oil market to crash down to single digits. So I'm sitting here in beautiful Cork Bay, Cape Town, cruising all the BNBs for a long end of this holiday, talking to you about the crypto, and it's no problem. It's a great joy and it's a bliss, and I love doing it. And that's because we have a method. We have a method that gives us uh, points at which you take off, and it's a really powerful method. It's the best that I have uh, out of 30 years and it's uniquely and only available through us. Click that link below to book a call. Anyway, so that's it. Bitcoin um, Bitcoin dominance is down. By the way, I've been using Simple FX. I'm trading the Euro czar. I'm trading the collapse of the RAND while in South Africa. Um, and I'm using a crypto collateral to do it with on Simple FX. You can see it uh, also below. Um, as I say, with all brokers counterparty risk if we go into absolute mayhem there's always uh, potential problems there and i think that could go right the way through to the likes of charles schwab and everything else if we get the real real shindig so always buyer beware don't have too much in uh, your own fund okay so we finish on the bitcoin we finish on the bitcoin a little bit of a bit candle but these were three very nasty rejection candles i want to highlight what a damaging candle this one is so we're just going to zoom in a little more this particular one here was an attempt to rally. So you opened here. You traded halfway up a very aggressive sell. You got spanked back down to your open and then closed down. This is high volatility selling. This started your move with the break there. And that was a key gimme of a break, guys. And that's, you know, nobody else has that angled line or horizontal lines that we have. No one else has the 42.5 and the 47.5 in there um, because they don't uh, appreciate what the uniqueness of the uh, head and shoulders that were the precursors of the bear. So it's often the, the previous cycles, key levels of significance made on the way down that manifest as significant again on the way back up. Um, okay. That's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. We've got uh, more in terms of smaller alts analysis that we're doing. You can join our community to find out more about uh, that. It is not a Telegram group, a Slack group, a WhatsApp group or anything like that. Custom, custom uh, and uniquely we don't sell lists. Uh, it's a private community group and you can become part of that and you can learn. And by the way, we don't only have the trading metamorphosis program. Everybody says in the comment, oh, it's too expensive. We have the self studies, uh, which still give you a Sunday session with us and the non farm and crypto session uh, on the first Friday of every month as well. So you get plenty of interaction um, in terms of that. 
Uh, so you can be part of that and it's a third of the cost. And then you can just come and do a live trading day with us as well um, on the first Friday of every month as the non-farm payrolls comes in. Okay, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Uh, so a little bit of a bid on Bitcoin. Voids and vacuums is something new. You learn volume by price. Find out how you should and why we draw it where we do it uh, and how it can tell you where the market is likely to move quickly. It's got a, a nice smooth tarmac road to go, not a muddy field. And how we can determine where the price layers have been really, really strong. Um, and that's super, super powerful when you do it. So watch, I wouldn't get too confident on any rallies right now. It's not tradable right now. We're just trying to determine where the next key levels are. If the, we have a retrace, reclaiming the 40 and possibly a return move even to the bagel over here that's somewhere along here that could also be uh, possible i wouldn't trust it for longs this is not a trading market you've just had an expansion of volatility we trade when the squeeze that was your short up top there at your 42.5 with a little inverted hvf that was also a squeeze if we go to a lower time frame let's just finish on that lower time frame we're on the 12 hour do the lower time frame. You see how those highs set up. It was so amazing. Look at that squeezy squeezy. At after you'd done the 47 uh, and a half. Look at that. Absolutely critical. And a blow off out the top. And then you let go. Look at that let go. There's a mini head and shoulders in there. There left super volatile head. And then weak right. And off you go. Down, down, down. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Um, and not a trading market. This is just to determine levels for what we do next when we start to see clear evidence of basing, uh, finding support. Uh, and even still, we'll let it rally a little bit. It's not instant movers markets. We may get inverted head and shoulders and other things. We'll watch new footprints in the sand. We've just had an explosion of volatility. We wait for the calming. Till next time, bye for now.